What's going on everyone? I'm Brian Petty and I'm here at Crower with my good friend Don and today we're talking about rocker arms and we're going to show you exactly how to set up a set of shaft mount rockers in your engine. Don, first I want to pick your brain about the design and the different materials you guys put into your rocker arms. The rocker arms we have here are the stainless steel rockers. It's a 17-4 material with a 5200 shaft, heat treated to our specs. You get a variety of options on the tips if you want, and uh, they come complete with you know, the stands, the adjusters, the bolts, the shims, the washers, everything. We also have an upgrade that's new for us is the steel billet rocker. That's made from a blank piece of steel. We machine them all in-house and heat treat them to our specs, and those are really picking up pretty good now too. And when would somebody use a steel rocker arm over a billet and vice versa? Well, a lot of times the blown cars, the cylinder pressure is so high on the exhaust. You're not only just trying to open against spring pressure, you're trying to open that valve against cylinder pressure. And a lot of times it, it plays havoc. Um, most rocker arms will break the exhaust rockers on a blown application where you've got boosted pressure. So then that's when you would probably want to go to the steel billet. And now that we know about the construction, the different tip options, Walk us through exactly how to set up shaft mount rockers on this big block Chevy cylinder head. Okay. Okay, so in a rocker arm, we're talking a circle. This is our, our shaft here. And like a normal big block Chevy is an inch 650 long. That's what we, we uh, make our rockers. Inch 650 long is from the center line of this to the outside of the circle, which would be the middle of the tip. And what we're trying to accomplish is that half lift, we want to be able to take square and be able to go across here and straight through the center line of that and come through the center line of that shaft. And what happens when somebody has their valve train geometry off a little bit and those, that exact square isn't there? What ends up happening is you get more tip travel. If you're low, you're going to get roll the tip out farther. With the valve closed, it's going to start out up here. And let's say we got 800 lift. This right here would be 400 from here to the center line. And then from here would be another 400 fully open. And that puts a lot more stress on the tip and the rocker arm and all of your valve train, right? Most of the stress pressure is on the, from the ramp of the cam. It ends up developing more spring pressure on this rocker arm at mid lift than it does full open because when the RPMs come up, you almost go to virtually weightless because the valves are almost ready to float. So this is the strongest point, is from here down through the center line. All right, let's go ahead and put that into practice on this cylinder head with this whole kit we have set up from Crower. So what we've done is we've made a gauge for setting it up. And in order to do that, we've taken half of the diameter of the tip of the rocker, half of the diameter of the shaft. We added those two together and it gives us the number. Then we take how much lift we have. We basically do it for uh, 750 lift. That's what the, the gauge is made for. So we take half of that, 375. We minus it and it comes out 212. So that's the distance that we have to have here. And it comes with this dummy shaft, which is the same diameter as the shaft that's in the rocker. On a big block Chevy, we have a one-piece intake stand. All, all the intake stands are joined together, which is good too because it also kind of makes it like a girdle for the head. It strengthens the head also. And anytime you can make anything more rigid, it's gonna be better Correct. for everything. Correct. What we're trying to do here <clears throat> is I didn't put, place any shims underneath it. I'm just trying to get a general idea where I'm at. I'm just setting it there and trying to get the bolt holes lined up. You can stick a couple bolts in it if you want to. Then I take this gauge and I set it on top of the valve like so and I look at the gap in between. If it was set up for 750, that shaft should be touching that gauge right now. It's set up for a lot more lift. And that's where all the shims and washers and spacers shims. come in. You got to take your lift into consideration. More lift than this gauge, there's a gap underneath. Less lift than the 750, then you put the shims, you put a feeler gauge on this side and raise this up and then, put, then measure from this side and then raise, shim it up till it touches on the other side. So more lift, the bracket has to go down. Less lift, the bracket has to come up. And that is giving you the proper geometry and everything will be in the strongest position.
what are a lot of calls and complaints that you guys might hear over the phone of people when they're trying to set this stuff up? Okay, well, we initially get these cylinder heads, we get them from Dart, and they send us what they're producing. And somebody gets the head and says, I want to put more lift on it. Well, then you have to put a longer valve in to put the spring in so that you can get more lift out of it. And then they say, well, okay, well, I'm going to do that. I want titanium valves too. Well, then you got to put a lash cap on top of that. Well, now it has really just lengthened everything. And there's a lot of people call and say, hey, look, I put this on here and I can't get the tip to get in the middle. And I got to shim it up so much to get the tip to right in the middle. Riding the, the tip in the middle is not as important as getting the height of the stand right. That's the important part, to get your geometry correct. You can take, after you get the stand height right, and you get it all on there, and you go and you roll, roll your tip, you know, you mark your valve and you roll your tip, and you see where your, your uh, wear pattern is, your witness mark, and you go, wow, it could come out a little bit more towards the exhaust side. Well, you can always take and notch the stand holes just a little bit on both sides and slide the stand over this way, but your geometry is still correct. Well, perfect. Is there anything else that people need to know about setting up something like this? No, this is basically a, a bolt-on deal. Perfect. All right, Don, thank you so much. Yeah, Brian. And where can people go if they want to find out more information or they want to pick up a set of shaft mount rockers for their engine? Crower.com. Simple as that. You heard it from him. And if you need any more up-to-date information on engines overall, check out EngineLabs.com.